So here I'm using the extrude edge and I'm going to delete this face. Select both of these, select that edge, and then use the wedge faces tool. And you can see that that's isolated these faces, so all I have to do is select them. Uh, lasso select and delete them. Now I'm just extruding this face. Next, just simply preparing the edges here in the middle so we have a bit more detail. Moving the pivot point, freezing the transformations, duplicating and negatively scaling, then combining them and merging the vertices using default uh, tolerance. Now we're going to go ahead and simply bevel the middle here and insert use the insert edge loop tool just to get a bit more detail in there now you can see when I've used a uh, smooth mesh smooth mesh preview you can simply deselect and uh, see the resulting mesh although that won't be used I'll be using mental ray approximations okay so here's the table and now I'm going to simply do a bevel there and increase the offset and now increase the subdivisions of the bevel uh, and I think that four seemed pretty good. Now I'm just extruding this face. Same little uh, bevel thing going on there. Same here. I'm just going to uh, select that loop and scale it out. Select these faces and then uh, duplicate them. Scale them up. Now you see that they've been scaled negatively so the uh, normals have been reversed. So I'm reversing the normals now selecting these uh, vertices and merging them. And the default tolerance worked fine. Select that face loop, extrude the edge there. This is one way to do it. Uh, select those two edges, select that edge loop, use the, the uh, it's called the slide edge tool, and it's really, really good. I use it a lot. Uh, let's you select a loop of edges and then simply slide them. Okay, so the same thing here, I'm just selecting that edge and using the bevel. Okay, using transform component, uh, you can see that's a also a really useful little uh, command. Okay, so now I'm using the split polygon tool to uh, make sure these are quads. So when you see that I smooth it, you can see that they are quads. It's not completely necessary, but it's uh, clean topology. Uh, this little item here, I'm going to go ahead and extrude out. You can see that I'm scaling in a little bit. Select that edge loop and scale in as well. So that's basically what uh, usually goes on. There's nothing really complex here. It's just a matter of uh, mostly extrusions, a little bit of uh, pivot point placement. Now I'm going to duplicate that, scale negatively, combine, then merge vertices, selecting that edge right there, and uh, splitting the edge ring. Insert edge loop tool, again, uh, clear selection, and there's the result. So here's a little bit of a uh, uh, recording on uh, the walls. Pretty simple stuff. The windows there. I'm just deleting those faces. Okay, so you can see I'm using bridge, and then I can just fill hole in that area right there that is uh, that had an area that uh, needed to be filled. Now I'm creating some uh, vertices. So then I can append, and then finally select those vertices and merge them. And you can see that I went up in the marking menu. Okay, so this is a, a picture frame. Again, basic extrusions, a little bit of little bit of beveling. Okay, so I'm going to paint select uh, this little area here, so you can see that uh, it's one way to get a, a, a selection like this going easily. And by default, it has camera-based selection enabled. Okay, so I'm going to extrude these faces and then disable the keep faces together. So then now whenever I offset them, you can see that they are individual faces. Now I'm selecting this edge and then uh, running the uh, split edge uh, ring command. And I'm going to select all of these. And once I have my selection, I'm now going to uh, hold down the D hotkey and position the... Uh, I'm also locking the, the pivot, so that's what I'm doing. Position the pivot and then locking it as well, so that I can switch between transforms and the pivot remains custom pivot remains. Okay, so uh, that's half of this little light. So now I'm going to duplicate that. Again, combine, make sure the vertices are merged, and 
that's really about it for that for this object. Here's a curve I've set up. I'm going to evolve it uh, using a linear surface degree. I'm converting NURBS to polygons uh, based on control points, hiding that original surface, and now I'm going to select these vertices and merge them so that uh, that cleans that up. Now, history has been retained, so I'm just going to select some, some control vertices and invoke soft selection. I can uh, position these and the surface updates. Now I'm just hiding the curve. I'm going to uh, center the pivot there and position this vase under the table. One of the little uh, sections of the chair. And not that it's important, but I did make a little NURBS curve there so that I can then position these vertices uh, into location. Now I'm going to snap based on the edge. So you see that I've arranged my uh, move axis based on the edge there. I'm going back into the perspective. Now I'm going to check. Everything seems okay, so now I'm going to duplicate these, and I'm also using snapping for the rotation. Merging the vertices again. And you can see that the topology there is a little bit messy, uh, so I'm going to remove all those faces and now just do a basic, basic extrude on them. Okay, so here's the chair. I'm just simply doing some uh, extrusions on this seat here. simply using the gesturing as well as the transform tool so that you don't even have to touch the manipulator. Which is kind of nice. Using the arrow keys to pick walk between different edge loops. Now I'm invoking soft selection. Now you can hold down B to bring up soft selection and then you can just press B to toggle soft selection but then you can hold down B and move your mouse and you can uh, adjust the fall off radius. So that's kind of nice. So as you can see that I'm dynamically adjusting that fall off radius to uh, get a better result. Very easy to do. I'm just going to delete those faces. Mirror these polygons. You can see that the seat's a bit wide. Uh, not an issue. Now here I've simply deleted that uh, those faces and I've uh, redone this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Merging again. So here's the couch. Uh, nothing much going on here, just a basic, started off with a basic box. And you can see that there's a little black outline. Those are uh, referenced uh, geometry that has been uh, templated. No, I think it's, yeah, it's referenced. And so I'm uh, building my uh, little couch here based on that as a guide. So here's one of the pillows. I'm just going to go into the artisan tool, the sculpting tool here, and I'm just going to give a little bit of uh, roughness to this surface. It helps to uh, randomize it a little bit. So now I'm using the Mitchell Approximation Editor. And these objects will be uh, subdivided at render time and their limit surface approximated uh, using the Catmull Clark algorithms. So now I'm replacing the environment shader with some mental images production shader library nodes as well as some of the architectural nodes. And what these uh, nodes do can be uh, uh, read about in the manuals. They're not entirely necessary but I'm using them to uh, get some more functionality. So for example the single environment lookup in the MIA material utilizes the ENV blur node which I'm uh, using right now, plugging a lookup spherical and just choosing a HDRI map. And now I'm ready to uh, create some lights. So here you can see that the IPR is going down at the bottom in the render view. I'm simply going to translate this plane up in the Y axis. And you can see that it has a little uh, texture assigned nothing too special about it, just a standard 8-bit image. I'm just going to multiply the sky portal a little bit and that looks a little more realistic. So now here's another portal light, just positioning it into place. Now you don't have to set any other attributes other than the use light shape, 
set visible. And of course, your high samples, low samples, and and high sample limit. Uh, they do very specific things. Again, all of this can be uh, read in the. It can be found in the manual. So the advanced attributes use custom environment. And I'm going to go with a uh, black body so that this area light becomes effectively a light card with a temperature of 5500 degrees Kelvin which is a little bit warm but that's sort of what I wanted I'm just going to graph this, net graph this network and position the camera and now initiate an IPR and you can see that that looks looks okay the intensity multiplier I'm going to bump it up a little bit more from 20 to 35 